Today I'm painting tulips from the garden. I've left them in the garden because I like walking by them. I didn't want to just pick them. I've mixed up rose madder and zillion crimson because I'm starting here, which is the speckled one. So the first thing to do is to gently wet the petals. Just put some water on and it will help the paint flow to give the shape. Add some lines. And they will bleed as the flower almost looks like it has. Just put them down. And every now and again you get a much bigger coloured area. More speckles. Just keep going like that till you've got the idea of how it looks. And then in the middle, to change your direction, it's quite speckled. But because the paper's damp, these go in more loosely. If you find anything that's really obvious, put that in first, and then that will help you sort out the rest. And then very gently, some areas that are sort of 90% pink. As the other petals are further behind it, I'm not going to wet the paper because I want them to look slightly different. So I'm going to try doing it dry and then perhaps putting a little bit of water on top afterwards. You want to make the petals look separated from each other and slightly different. And that separated them from the petal in front. I've just got a number four brush and just tickled some of the same paint across just catching the tooth of the paper. Now moving on to the more red one next to it. I'm going to try several different reds and see which ones work the best. It's probably going to end up with highlights of one, more orangey, and then going through the darker ones. So I think I'll start with a zillion crimson on the right hand side where it's not catching the light so much. Going in with a bigger brush because it's more of a solid colour. It's quite dark towards the bottom. Might need some purple in there to tint it because it's still unfurling. I did notice when I was watching these out the kitchen window to decide which ones to paint that in the mornings or if it's raining they close up as the sun comes out they open up so if you're trying to work out their best position just look at the weather Go this will need a second coat i think to give it more shape and form but you have to start somewhere i was just following up the line of the petals always paint and draw things the way they are formed if you can. Now I've got three or four petals that are going to the back of the bud. So I'll change paints, go in with the crimson, make a dark line here of the next petal. And that same petal goes all the way around the back and there's other petals in front of it. So I'll stop it there. And then it's a very dark V. And then slightly lighter colour. So I'll change to Rose Madder from Crimson. Just to show there's a difference. And then I think I'm going to have to let it dry before they all bleed into each other. And there's a slight lighter edge to that petal. And then in the middle it's quite bright. Just catching a little bit of sun. So that's, I've got to stop that now, but I'm just going to make sure that while it's drying, that it's not going to bleed in the wrong direction. So I'm just lightening off the edges, making them a bit softer. This one looks more finished with less work because the darker one needs more shape and form. To get a number four brush and some very, very diluted rose madder, and I'm just going to put the whole petal in almost with water just 
just move the paint that's already there. I'm not adding any more. You want all your flowers to look slightly individual. And there is a tiny white bit in the middle, but I can easily take that back with a brush. And I'll just take the pink over a little bit more. Right, that's had a moment to dry. So I will now continue with number four brush because it's, it's a bigger flower and more detailed and just gently go into the nooks and crannies. That's quite crimson in here where the petals overlap. Just pop it in. It's a little bit stripy. And then because this one's still unfurling, the stripes are going sideways. I'm using the bigger brush because I want to just leave gentle marks. And it's quite a dry brush on this occasion. And then I'll change to a different brush, change to a number two, slightly wetter paint, and do the far corner and just dry the brush off and merge them slightly. And then coming up from the bottom, it's quite dark, it's speckles and lines again. So I can put one line into that's to the left of the stem. And then I've got some sideways ones, suggest them, but they're not dominant. And again with the stem. And it goes quite dark to crimson round the corner. And they're quite speckly. So I'll get a clean brush and just lose the edges gently. And then when it's dry, I'll put some more highlights on. So I can move back to this one again now. Bigger brush. A zillion crimson this time, I think. Make sure the brush isn't too wet so I'm in control. And I'm starting from the bottom this time, having got the shape. Let's go all the way up. And it's got slight speckles on it. If you haven't got any in your garden, uh, the public parks are very good at the moment. You find lots to paint there. And if they're in a raised bed, it makes it easier to draw them. I'm just going to feather the edge off because it goes to slightly orangey where the sunlight's coming through. So just moving the paint so it's a lost edge. And then there's a crimson one in the middle. Going out to pink. So I use the Rose Madder this time. If you haven't got Rose Madder, you can uh, tint crimson to make... Um, it's a very similar shade, just have to use it very watered down. I'll put all the instructions um, for mixing colours in the description. And do the petals at the back. And then this brighter red goes down the edge. So i use this one. This shows a slight difference. I've got Rose Madder on a number four brush and I'm gently just going to go over this speckled one. Wipe the brush off completely clean and just merge some of it in. I'm now moving over to the shorter one which is quite light on the front and dark on the back. Because there's so many different petals merging together and curling over, I'm going to start on the right hand side, the one that's tucked around the corner. And then when it gets to the top, it actually is still unfurling, so it's going sideways. 
and then going up to the to the very top with this just a gentle little line and then in the middle it's very dark where it's overlapping so I'm just going to put in a very dark area and let that down with water so that it's got a lost edge now I'm changing to a bigger brush and rose madder and going in with the front petal which is speckled so I'm using the side of the brush to pick up the grain of the paper to give me the speckled effect and it stops short because there's a white area now it's not completely speckled in straight lines it's sort of going a little bit herring bony so I'm going to go in sideways a little bit and again on the other side back to a number two brush and a darker colour the crimson and go round the top of the petal and then all the way round and go out making the brush clean and wet and moving the paint around and there's a delicate petal at the back which is more pink one side than the other and then very delicate pink at the back here which is catching sunlight a little bit of pink left on the brush but that doesn't matter because they're speckled so I'm now changing to number two brush and loading it with a mixture this time of Brazilian crimson and rose madder and into the wet paint just gently dropping some pigment stopping wiping the brush off and now just feathering it so that it's more of a lost edge more delicate and because the paper's already wet it'll do a lot of the work for me no more paint just moving the paint that's already there and again on the other side this time to get the angles I'm going the opposite direction and then it is definitely crimson on the right hand side there's a long line going down and one on the very edge of the petal so I put those in wipe the brush off and get the number four brush with some crimson on and they're crimson speckles so I'm just going to gently try and mark the paper And then in the middle it goes back to almost pink again. So I'll just take the brush for a walk to show the other petals. Now I can't do any more to that till it's dried because I need to be subtle. So I'll move down to this nice low one. For this low tulip I'm mixing two colours for the outer petals I'm mixing lemon yellow and a little bit of Naples yellow and it's very thin much weaker towards the middle of the first flower so I just put on one layer and then I can go over it the, it the pattern on it is very deep crimson so it will go over the yellow all right so it's in this case better to go over the whole flower at once there are some highlights 
where the sun's catching it so I've got a flat brush and I'm just going to touch the top of the petal and just take a little bit back I've given the <coughs> yellow tulip a chance to dry and I'm now going to use a size 2 brush and a zillion crimson and put in the darker pattern I'm using a number two to try and get the points but just give me enough paint to do the job so I'm going to start where I've got a line from overlapping petals to a point and I'll take the point out gradually and then I've got almost the pattern going the opposite way as this pe uh, petal is curved I've got an inverted triangle and then a lot of crimson another area on the edge and a tiny bit coming round the corner but it's slightly lighter in the background so I've got petals coming round that are covering it and then I've got the same long spiky section I'll just spike it out. I'm not counting the spikes. I'm just putting them in. And this feathers a little bit. And then in the middle here, different tone completely. So I'll just clean the brush off and then just move it a little bit. I can adjust all these in them afterwards if I want to, but I just need to get the shape in first. Now, while that's drying, I can go back to some of the others. I've just added the base colour to two more tulips and put a few speckles on a far one, which I've made a bit darker to separate it from the others. But what I can do while I'm waiting for them to dry is to put the stems in which you've got to make a decision which brush to use. The harder you press the brush, the wider it goes. So you need to make sure that you're OK. Not all the stems are completely straight. I've mixed up um, a brown, a blue, a green and the yellow that I mixed earlier. I'm just trying a number four brush all the way down. This one goes in front of the leaf and it is slightly curved. This one's slightly curved as well. So I just rub them back, load the brush quite well, make you sure that you're comfortable and start from the top and just pull the paint down with the brush very, very gently, pulling your elbow towards yourself. And it's a bit like one end. While it's still wet, you can go back and go again, perhaps with the emphasis on the other side of the stem, but just remain in control, do it slowly and carefully. And again, I'll find a straight one in a minute, they're all slightly bent. This one, just pop it in. But the harder you press on the brush, the wider it will be. So just make sure that you're happy with the position of it all. I don't know why they're all so wobbly. And then moving across. I've added a few more stems. Proceed to adding the darker markings to the two forward tulips. I've just mixed up some chrome yellow and blue for the leaves. I've got a number four brush and I'm going to start from the left and work my way across. I'm starting from the left. The, re the only reason is that 
um, I know that the, the flowers are dry there and then when I've finished I can tint whatever's necessary some of the leaves will need just a little hint of something to show that they're twisted and if you get any on the stem don't worry just use your finger and take it off this one goes behind this the stem here using a big brush because it carries more paint but I'm still in control and the leaves all overlap each other I just try and go around in the shape that they're formed and this one here has got a bend over so what I will do is just add some blue and drop it in wipe the brush off should just make it look slightly darker at the tip and there's a little one coming up from the ground I know you're supposed to do things the way they grow but I can't get my hand on the edge of the pad and that again has got some dark on one corner so I'll just drop the blue in let it find its own way this is a French ultramarine and then there's a really, really squiggly one. We've got a stem coming up and then the leaves coming over the stem. So what I'm doing is just as I added the blue to the other colour, just added a tiny bit of chrome yellow here. Just to give it a little bit of shape. And that goes into infinity it's curling over and going out of sight I'll just discipline myself to start say at the left and go round there's lots of things overlapping and in shadow of each other Some with a few twists and turns. But the leaves are just a foil for the tulips, so don't worry too much about it. They just disappear in a tangle. see they're all developing a little independent colour with the fact that one's catching the light one side and then causing a shadow to the adjacent one. I'm continuing with the leaves just putting them in with a homemade green which is chrome yellow and French ultramarine and then where there's highlights or shadows just adding a little bit of blue or yellow one or the other now I want these to be a foil for the tulips so I don't actually want every nook and cranny on the leaves and there's so many of them I just want to give the suggestion of them now this leaf's quite bent so I'm going to put yellow on the far side of it and then rejoin the two with the green and the same with the leaf above it that's slightly more blue but it's in shadow it's easier to go down from the point in some circumstances if you're completely stuck you can actually turn the paper upside down or rotate it to get a better angle but as I'm filming this it's easier to leave it as it is just get the blue and go down the outside 
wash your brush off, dry it a little bit and then just merge the two together. I've got four leaves overlapping each other here. Same colours, just put the paint on and then try and find the dark bits. So I'm going to start with the area under this leaf because that's already started to dry. So I'll go down to the bottom. And then come up and it goes round these two it's a bit ragged here and up the side of the flower amazing how many different bends and curves you get in a tulip leaf then I'm going to get the blue and drop it in on the left hand side all the way down it's always good to have some very darks next to some very lights on a picture now I've found the space I can drop in some slightly stronger colour Then the far side of the leaf, I'll go straight in with a little bit of weak blue. And again, there's other petals cutting across it. So I'll stop there and it gets completely lost at the bottom. And it goes behind the tulip. So now I'll get the yellow, mix it a little bit in with the green and pull it all forward. going round the existing leaves and when it's dry I could always add a little bit of strength to it but I've got the shape as it's wet I could still add a little bit I'll go over the blue I already laid down You can see that the leaf has folded there and just carry on like that all the way across. But this one's got two areas of sunlight coming through. As the flowers are causing their own shadows. So for the sunlight, I'll just drop in extra yellow and it will separate. So I'll just get the yellow, mix it in a little bit, and there's some under there, and some on the edge. And I can come back to that when it's dry. And then over here, to finish off, there's one that's in its own shadow, so I'll add more blue. I need to let this dry a little before I can put final details on. I'm not putting too much detail, it's just going back with the blue and yellow as I did there just to show a little gentle highlight. I've just gone round some of the leaves and just added a few high spots and shadows, especially where there's three or four leaves all going over each other. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and you'll find some tulips to paint yourself this week.